All right, mates, how's it going? In today's video, chapter two of Arthur's Rise of the Lich King by Christy Golden. This one's got a few time jumps in it because it covers the events of the Second War and then some. So let's get. Arthas was ever so slightly pissed off. When word had come about the orcs, the prince had assumed that he would finally be allowed to begin serious training so he could get good and stuff. But that's not what ended up happening at all. The war against the Horde had resulted in anyone who could swing a sword having to join the fight. So there was no one left in the kingdom who could train him. But Varian had taken pity on him. So the two of them were currently sparring together in the armory hall. Arthas, I don't want to sound mean, but, but I'm crap. Varian grimaced. I mean, it's surprising because you're athletic and fast and Arthas could tell that the older prince was just trying to soften the blow. But the truth was, he was indeed crap. In Stormwind, we start training quite young. By the time I was your age, I had my own set of armor. Yeah, all right, mate. No need to rub it in. Sorry, I just wonder why your father didn't do the same for you. Arthas knew the reason why. Terranus was trying to protect him, perhaps a little bit too much. My father tried to protect me too. Didn't work. The real world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. Look, I'm trained to fight. I'm not trained to teach fighting. I might hurt you. That rubbed further salt in Arthas's pride wound. Varian hadn't even considered the possibility that Arthas might hurt him. So Arthas began to sulk, and Varian must have realized he was digging himself into an even deeper hole, so he quickly added, tell you what, when the war's ended and a proper trainer returns, I'll come with you to talk to the king. I'll help you convince him. And as time passed, the war eventually did end with the Alliance victorious. Anduin Lothar had been slain, but a young paladin lieutenant called Turalyon had stepped up and defeated his killer, the leader of the Horde, Orgrim Doomhammer, and then shown mercy by choosing to spare the jerk rather than just kill him. And King Terranus, who's a nice bloke, decided to honor that decision and declared that Orgrim Doomhammer was not to be harmed. So, the beast had been brought back to Capital City in chains. And seeing the powerful orc being paraded through Lordaeron's streets whilst people yelled things like Shame! and Boo! made quite a big impression on both of the young princes. It was the only time Arthas had seen full-on hate in Varian's face, and he couldn't really blame him. If orcs had murdered Terranus or Uther, Arthas would probably hate them too. He should be killed. I wish I could chop off his balls and set him on fire. He's going to the Undercity. No one ever gets out from the Undercity. It's basically impossible to find an exit. He'll die in captivity. Too good for him. Turalyon should have just killed him. And Varian wasn't wrong, because not long after, Doomhammer managed to escape. Turned out he was far from broken and the guards had grown kind of complacent. No one was sure exactly how he'd escaped because no one survived to report on it. He literally broke the neck of every guard he encountered. And not just guards either, homeless people and criminals too. Doomhammer didn't give a shit. He just went from his cell to the sewers whilst being all like, you get a broken neck and you get a broken neck. And although after further time passed, he was captured again, and this time placed in an internment camp, he just bloody escaped for a second time. He was like some kind of Houdini or something. The Alliance held its breath, waiting for another seemingly inevitable attack from a renewed horde. But for two years, there was nothing. Maybe everything was gonna be all right. Nope, it now looked as if the dark portal was reopening or was about to be reopened or something. Arthas wasn't entirely sure because no one was bothering to tell him anything. He was 11 years old now. It was an outrage. The weather was nice outside and all Arthas wanted to do was go and hang out with his new horse. The very same horse that he'd seen being born two years ago. A horse which he'd named Invincible. But that would have to wait. For now, he was heading over to the armory. He'd had a bit of a growth spurt recently, so he wasn't going to use the little child sword he'd been using before. He grabbed a bigger one and then swung it about for a bit and then approached one of the old suits of armor and imagined it was one of the disgusting green monsters from the war. Thank you to pass here, vile orc. You are in Alliance lands, but I shall show you mercy this once. Be gone and never return. Ah, but the orcs do not understand surrender or honor. They were just brutes, so it would refuse to kneel. What? You will not depart? You have besmirched me, and I wish for you to unsmirch me. Very well, you have had your chance, but now we fight. The young prince then lunged, just as he'd seen Varian do. Strike, block, duck, whirl, and then the sword flew out of his hands and across the room. And as Arthas looked over to where it had landed, he saw Moradin Bronzebeard, dwarven ambassador to Lordaeron and brother to King Magni Bronzebeard, looking right at him, like, what the balls is that kid doing? Moradin had a reputation as an excellent warrior, so Arthas was more than a little bit embarrassed that the dwarf had just seen him pretending to fight orcs and throwing his sword clear across the room. Um, ambassador, I was just, <clears throat> I'm looking for your father, boy. Can you direct me? This place is a bloody maze. So Arthas quietly pointed to a stairway to his left and watched as the dwarf walked off in that direction. And then, 
fighting back tears of shame, he placed the wooden sword back on the rack and ran away like a little bitch. Ten minutes later, he was riding out of the stables and heading east into the hills of Tirisfar Glades. He wasn't riding invincible though, instead he had two horses. He was mounted on an elderly gelding called Trueheart with the two-year-old colt Invincible on a training lead. Arthas desperately wanted to ride Invincible, but the horse master had warned that Two was still a year too young. Two is a baby. They're still growing. The bones are still forming. Be patient, your highness. But Arthas didn't want to be patient. A year was a long time. Too long. And his impatience wasn't helped by the fact that True Heart could only muster a plodding canter. Surely one ride on Invincible wouldn't hurt, right? So Arthas got off True Heart and approached Invincible, said a quick prayer to himself and then vaulted onto the horse's back. At first, Invincible reared and neighed furiously. The young prince wrapped his hands into the wiry mane and clung on for dear life as the horse bucked and hopped. But eventually, Invincible was galloping. In fact, it felt like he was flying. The giddy young prince grinned from ear to ear. He'd never been on an animal this fast before and it was bloody exciting. It was glorious. It was everything he'd ever dreamed of. People would sing songs of this day and Bleh! Arthur's hurtled through the air and then winded himself as he landed hard on the solid earth. Once he caught his breath, he got back to his feet. His body ached, but nothing was broken. However, Invincible was now a rapidly disappearing dot off in the distance. Oh, shitballs. He was definitely in trouble now. Sir Uther the Lightbringer was waiting for him as he returned. Arthas grimaced as he slid off True Heart. Invincible came back a short time ago by himself. Nasty cut on his leg, but I'm sure you'll be glad to hear that he'll be fine. You know you weren't supposed to ride him yet. I know. I don't think you do. If you put too much pressure on him at this age, he, he'll be crippled. Yeah, I get it. It was just one time. And that's all it will be, right? Yes, sir. And you missed your lessons. Again. Arthas was angry, embarrassed, and in quite a bit of pain. His right knee was starting to swell, and all he wanted to do was jump into a hot bath. Well, at least you're in time for the prayer session this afternoon. Although you'll need to have a wash first. Hurry up. We'll be assembling in the chapel. The young prince wasn't even sure what the prayer session was focusing on today, and he felt slightly bad about that. The light was important to his father and Uther, and he knew they wanted him to be as devout as they were. He couldn't even argue with the evidence. The light was definitely real. Priests and paladins regularly worked miracles and healing and protection. But Arthas just didn't like meditating because it was boring. But an hour later, Arthas hurried to the small family chapel in the royal wing. In addition to his father, Uther and Muradin, who were regular attendees of these prayer sessions, Arthas also saw King Trollbane was there. And someone else, a girl, slender, with long blonde hair. As Arthas curiously peered at her, he walked directly into one of the benches. <laughs> Queen Leanne turned and smiled gently. Kalia shot him a scowl, and Terranus nodded, albeit disapprovingly, before returning his attention to the bishop. Arthas then sat down and the bishop began his service, and his royal highness Arthas Menethil. What? May the light's blessing be upon him in every thought, word, and deed, so that he may thrive beneath it and grow to serve it as its paladin. Arthas then felt a sudden calming warmth flow through him. The stiffness and soreness of his knee softened, and he felt refreshed. The bishop then turned towards the queen and princess and blessed them as well, and Arthas grinned, because he now realised that the bishop would bless whoever that hot sexy girl was over there and say her name out loud. And we humbly request the light's blessing on Lady Jaina Proudmoore. Aha! The mystery girl was a mystery no longer. Jaina Proudmoore, daughter to Admiral Dalin Proudmoore, the ruler of Col Tirith. Why was she here? And that her studies in Dalaran go well. We ask that she become a representative of the light, and that in her role as a mage, she will serve her people well and truly. Right. Good thing that bishop seems to have the answer to all of my questions. She was on her way to Dalaran, which made sense. The beautiful city of Magi wasn't too far away from Capital City, but knowing the rigid rules of etiquette and hospitality, it was likely she'd be here for a few days before travelling on. So Arthas grinned again. This could be fun. At the end of the service, Arthas was closest to the door, so he stepped out first. Trollbane and Moradin exited next, looking slightly relieved that the service was over. And finally, Terranus, Leanne, Kalia and then Jaina walked out. Arthas observed Jaina next to his sister, Kalia was delicately boned and had a face like a slapped ass, but Jaina was bright-eyed and had a lively smile. This was a girl who would not mind getting a snowball in the face. But a voice then interrupted that thought. Arthas, a word with you. Damn it, Moradin. Why was he getting in the way of Arthas introducing himself to his new friend? Of course, sir. The two of them then walked several paces away from the rest of the group. Lad, I'll get right to the point. Your fighting form is terrible. <sighs> I know. My father... That ain't your father's fault, lad. Well, I can't exactly teach myself fighting, can I? Aye, I'll teach you if you like. You... you will. Arthas couldn't believe it. The dwarves were renowned for their fighting prowess. This was going to be brilliant. Maybe Moradin could teach him how to hold his ale as well. That would be cool. I've already spoken to your father. He's all for it. Been put off long enough as it is. 
But let's get one thing straight. I'll take no excuses. I'll be pushing you hard. And the moment I think I'm wasting my time, I'll stop. Okay, boy. Arthur stifled a giggle at the fact that someone half his size had just called him boy. Yes, sir. The two of them then shook hands, and the young prince glanced over to his father and Uther, and they both looked at him, eyes narrowing in speculation. And it was at that point that Arthas realised he probably wasn't going to have any time to introduce himself to Jaina Proudmoore now, and that was a bit sad. But he turned to watch as Kalia and Jaina started to leave, and right before Admiral Proudmoore's daughter disappeared through a doorway, she turned her golden head, made direct eye contact with Arthas, and smiled. And we're leaving it there! So, this wasn't intentional, but it's just dawned on me that if there's anyone watching these videos that doesn't really play Warcraft, they're probably thinking, Jesus, that Jaina lady gets around a bit, doesn't she? In the next chapter, Arthas kind of begins his training, but also, he and Jaina go on a little adventure. As usual, link in the description if you're interested in buying this book. Also, there's links to my Discord server and my Patreon page too. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and... See ya!